Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike here in today's video. We're gonna jump into the box starting, whoa, I can't talk at all. We're gonna go through the hack the box box in starting, we're gonna go through how to get through the, we're gonna go over the starting point box called pre-ignition on hack the box. This is one of the relatively easy ones, but it is good because it's one of your first exposures to how to enumerate a web-based application. So this is definitely a lesson that you don't wanna skip. So let's jump right into it. It's a pretty easy one, shouldn't take a lot of time. All right, so here we are in Hack the Box. Now, I literally just spun up this machine. So let's go ahead and click the IP to copy it to our clipboard. We'll head over to Pwnbox. If you're using a VM on your system, you'll just launch your Kali VM or whatever you're running as your attacker VM. But in my case, I am using Pwnbox. So let's go ahead into Pwnbox. Let's run our initial scan. I like to do nmap-v for verbose-s capital C for scripts. And I always do dash N, which disables DNS resolution. It doesn't really do a lot, to be honest, in this scenario, but it's just the habit of mine. Um, then I'll specify the IP of the system we want to scan. I'm just going to paste it in there. All right, so that's our scan. Let's go ahead and run that. So we see right off the bat, let's see. We see right off the bat, where is it? Uh, down here, we have port 80 HTTP open. And it is running Nginx, which is a web server. Uh, it also has a, a component of it to do load balancing. So that's good to know. Um, we don't see anything else. Now, what I typically would do, I'm going to go ahead and open up another screen here. Keep in mind that the default Nmap scan right here, because I didn't specify any ports, by default, it will only scan the 1,000 most common ports. So you don't wanna ever just assume this covers everything. It's very easy to make that assumption. So what you can do is you can do another scan kind of in the background. Maybe we don't do scripts for this one. Um, and I'll just do 10, 129, 70.75. Now the difference here, I'm going to specify a port with dash P. Normally you could do something like this. This would scan port 80 only. Now, instead of that, if we want to scan all 65,535 ports, we can just do dash P dash. And then what we can do is we can run that in the background and that'll just make sure, look right here, 65,535 ports being scanned right now. This is just a good thing to get used to running in the background. Again, we could even minimize it and just come back to it later as we're working on other things, just to make sure we don't miss an open port. And believe me, I've missed open ports not running this so just keep that in mind all right now in our case i'm going to go ahead and uh we'll go ahead and kill that for now and let's focus on this port 80 piece oops let me close that okay all right so we have port 80 open so how do we handle this situation what do we do with this the first one and probably the most obvious is let's open up a browser and let's navigate to it so we have firefox over here i'm going to just move it over here so we kind of can see a little bit of both so let's go to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash our IP 10.129.70.75. All right. So we see we get this welcome to Nginx page. It looks like kind of an install page. It's pretty generic. Um, not a lot here. Now, what I want to do from here, I think, is I want to work on some enumeration to find if there's other directories here, for example, that might be interesting or other files. So what I'm going to use for that is I'm going to use GoBuster. So GoBuster will allow us, there is other tools, by the way, but GoBuster is one. It'll allow us to do a scan of essentially any directories or files that might be on this web server so that we can further enumerate. So to run GoBuster, what we can do is we can type GoBuster. And if I do a space and hit enter, it'll actually show us some of the available commands. And what we want next, so the, the, the basically the syntax is GoBuster, then one of these right here. So we are going to do GoBuster dir, D-I-R. So we'll do GoBuster D-I-R. And then the important one we want to make sure we get, there's kind of two of these options. Um, one is going to be the URL. And by the way, and we don't see it here, so I just want to point this out before I hit enter. You don't see a URL option here. So what's kind of cool about GoBuster is if you type in GoBuster dir, hit enter, oops. 
I seem to mess up my LED in every video. We're gonna just, we're gonna get rid of this. We'll turn this off, okay. So we see here that when I hit enter, it said required flags, URL, and word list not set. So if we do go buster dir, dash dash help, it will then, let's scroll up. See see what I'm talking about? Look at all these options we have now. So now it says usage is go buster dir, then flags, and you have all of these flags. I, I know that seems uh, not important, but it is important that you understand there's a different context sensitive kind of help menu here, essentially. Um, or information, I guess. But the important ones we need specifically are the dash U for the URL. And in our case, that'll just be the IP. Um, and then we also want, uh, if we go down here, the word list string. We want to specify a word list to kind of keep trying against this web server. So let's build it out. We're going to do go buster dir. We'll specify dash U for our URL. We'll do HTTP colon forward slash forward slash our IP, there we go. Then we'll do a dash W to specify a word list. Again, that is required in this case. So uh, I'm gonna, gonna use uh, one of the default ones in this system. It is at user slash share slash word list. From there, if you hit tab, it'll actually auto complete. And so it'll give you the options, maybe not auto complete, but it'll show you the other options. Um, so I'm gonna go in Durbuster and then hit slash, and then we'll do a tab again to see what files we have inside of there. Um, let's do, I, I actually like doing this medium one, um, but just for the sake of time, let's try out this small one really quick. Um, so let's go ahead and paste that. If, by the way, if you see me looking down at my keyboard, it's because this is a new keyboard and I haven't gotten used to the, uh, the way that you paste, it's kind of funny. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and hit enter on that scan. Okay, so what we're really looking for here is to enumerate some kind of file. We wanna see some kind of file uh, that, you know, or directory that we can use to further gain more information about this server and possibly find a way in. Um, we see here though, look at this. We're 30% through, we haven't gotten anything. Um, it's typically, that that's a little unusual. Typically you'll see something. Um, I'm not saying always, but a lot of times you will see something showing up here. So I'm gonna pause the video. We're at 50% completion. When this scan is done, we'll pick up from there. All right, so we see the scan completed, but look at this, we don't see any results. And this is one of your first takeaways, the first time probably in this series of starting point videos that you reach a point where you go, oh, okay, well, yeah, it didn't, didn't find any files. There must not be anything there. That's not the case. We need to make sure we continue enumerating and probably our shortcoming is really the word list we're using. So let's up arrow and let's remove this and maybe we try a different word list. Uh, I'm gonna try, let's see, let's go in the dir b directory. All right, so we have some other word lists we can use. Um, I like this common one. Uh, this is good. I like the big.txt one as well. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff in there though. So for the sake of time, let's just do common and we'll rerun that. And yeah, look at that. As soon as I reran it, now we have admin PHP. And the scan's already done, by the way. So that was super quick. So let's go ahead and navigate to that file. So we're going to the IP slash admin dot PHP. All right, so we get to this admin console login, which looks pretty promising. So the first thing I would always recommend doing is if it's some kind of common piece of software, this looks like a custom application, but if it is a common piece of software, before you do anything further, go look up default credentials for that piece of software. So if it's, you know, SolarWinds, for example, go see what the default login is for SolarWinds, right? Um, but in our case, this looks custom, so I don't know. So we'll, we'll start with the basics. We'll do like admin, no password. Uh, we'll do admin, um, Let's do password, admin password. Oh, I thought that one was gonna work. Uh, let's do admin admin and I'll try, oops, let's get this out of the way. <laughs> Look at that. So that was it, admin admin got us in. We see that we do have our flag here and that's it, that's the box. Obviously that's pretty easy. To be honest with you, even as you go into slightly harder boxes, you'll still find things like this uh, happening. You know, Maybe not necessarily you get admin admin and you're done with the box, but maybe admin admin gets you into somewhere where you can get some additional files for enumeration to kind of 
uh, build a picture of the network and to identify further vulnerabilities and that sort of thing. All right, so that's all I got for you guys in this video, pretty short and sweet. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this as we go into the harder boxes. If you watch this video and then go to the very first one I did on starting point, you will see a difference in difficulty and they are increasing pretty, pretty gradually at a good pace. But I promise if you do them in order, you will build your skills quite a bit. So practice makes perfect or well, maybe not perfect as close as you can get to it though. So keep practicing, keep doing this, check out the series. Let me know what you guys think until next time. Stay safe and healthy. And most importantly, stay nerdy.